Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm so delighted and glad to meet the Enter NBC family through our YouTube channel. For today's meditation, I would like to turn your attention to Second Book of Samuel, chapter one, verse number fourteen. It reads like this: So David said to him, "How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed?" I read once again. So David said to him, "How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed?" Let's close our eyes and look at the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this verse that you have given to us the today. Lord Jesus, let this word may come into our hearts that we may be able to understand it and interpret it well so that it may transform our lives inside out. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be accepted unto thy sight. Amen. Amen. So this verse speaks about David and David is talking to somebody we'll discuss who is that somebody and uh, he asked a significant question to that guy to that man how was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the lord's anointed i would like to talk about the context of the scripture portion what is actually happening here the first king of Israel was King Saul. Saul but failed to stand in front of the Lord as obedient king. He was not obedient to God. He failed in multiple areas. At his last battle, his son Jonathan and Saul, they were dead. When they are dead and next David is going to be the king. So this is the context. This is the situation here now. So what happened? Since long time, Saul was trying to kill David because Saul was so jealous of David. So Saul was trying to kill David. David was running for his life. He was hiding. There were some of his friends, some of his faithful men with with them. David was running, and David got chance to harm Saul, but still he refrained from that and he never laid his hand on Saul. but Saul was trying to kill him all the time he was looking for every opportunity and now Saul in the battle is dead now a person a man is bringing the news to David Saul one who was trying to kill you now he is dead then he asked how do you know it i was there Saul was leaning on his spear but he was not dead Then Saul called me. He asked me, "Who are you?" I said, "I am an Amalekite." Then he said, "Come, stand over me and kill me. My life is still in me, so kill me." So this Amalekite man, he stood over him and he killed him. Then he took the crown from his head and he took the bracelet from his arm and he is going to meet David. He thought. he will go and give the crown and he will give the bracelet of Saul and this will be a great news for David so when he gives this one he may get some rewards because Saul was trying to kill David so if David hears the news that Saul is dead so David will be happy and moreover he brought the crown and bracelet also so he thought oh this is going to be a great day i'm going to meet David i'm going to give the crown i'm going to give the bracelet so he will be happy he thought and he came and he said and he gave the report about Saul's death the moment david heard that saul and jonathan were dead in the battlefield he took hold of his clothes and he tore it and all the young men who were with him which means he was outburst that was outburst of his pain and agony now david lamented for saul and jonathan until the evening This young man this Amalekite was confused what is happening I thought this would be a great news for him I thought he will shout for joy I thought he will say the Lord has repaid Saul he thought in this way but on the other hand on the contrary David was not celebrating David was 
mourning for Saul. In fact, he wrote a song of lamentation for Saul. That is also recorded in this first chapter of uh, the second book of Samuel. Until evening, then evening, he called the man. He called the Amalekite who brought the crown and bracelet of Saul and who stood over Saul and killed him. He called him. Come. What happened? What did you do? Then he said, I killed him. Then he said, How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Saul is anointed by God. He is Lord's anointed. How dare you lay your hand on him and kill him? Then he said, Then David called one of the young men and said, Go near and execute him. And he struck him so that he was dead. So David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. This is something interesting. David is not giving reward for him to that's so because he brought the news that Saul is dead. David did not, did not reward him because he brought the crown and bracelet of the king. He did not reward. Rather, he killed. The reason is, you laid hand on the Lord's anointed. Anointing. The Greek word, oh sorry, the Hebrew word for anointing is mashak. It is setting apart somebody, consecrate somebody, purify somebody for a specific purpose especially to the service of God it is pouring out of oil on the head or the entire body they take some aromatic oil pour on the head on somebody which means that denotes that indicates that this person is set aside for a specific purpose in the Old Testament context we see this person is set aside for the service of God David thinks, David identifies, David acknowledges that Saul was anointed. How he acknowledged it? How did he identify? Because David himself was anointed. David himself was anointed by prophet Samuel. By this we understand that one who is anointed, one who understands his anointing, can understand the anointing of others too. That's what we see here. David was anointed. Not only David was anointed, he acknowledged his anointing. He identified his anointing and he actualized his anointing. The thing is, he ag agreed, yes, I am anointed. He acknowledged, he thanked God, yes, I am anointed. Second thing is, he actualized he lived as one he lived like an anointed person a one who is anointed by God how a person has to live he lived in that way he actualized it and he identified himself as an anointed person but you do, you, you think about the story of Saul remember the story when when Saul is going to meet prophet Samuel for the first time he was searching for his donkeys and he is going to prophet Samuel I came here to search for my donkeys. Prophet Samuel said, your, don your donkeys are already there. Don't worry. But the Lord is anointing you. He took the flask of oil and anointed Saul as king over Israel. Anointed. And he said, on the way you will go, you will meet a group of young prophets. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. You will prophesy. Same thing happened. After being anointed, Saul is walking and he is meeting, he is confronting the group of young prophets. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he prophesied. Even the people who were with Saul, they were surprised, they were wondering, Oh really, even, even Saul is one among the prophets? That much. The Spirit of the Lord came, anointing, everything happened. And he is going back to home, his uncle is asking, What did this seer said? What did Prophet Samuel said to you? He said this, donkey sir. There we found the donkeys. Okay. Did he say anything else? Saul did not say he anointed me because he did not acknowledge his anointing. He said, no, 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 nothing. Then the time came, they put the lot to select the king. 
prophet Samuel know already prophet Samuel knew already that he already anointed Saul his name is going to come Saul also knew that but what he is doing they put the Lord they put the Lord and finally the Lord came on Saul they are searching for Saul where is Saul where is Saul Saul was hiding number one he did not identify he did not acknowledge his anointing second he did not identify his anointing he did not identify himself with the anointing that he was anointed and they asked of the Lord Lord where is he is this man among us then God said he is hiding there hiding behind the equipments hiding behind the baggages so they went and they took him and they brought him and they made him king and the rest of the story you know very clearly he failed he did not he did not rule the people of Israel as God thought or God as God purposed at last he was jealous on David and he was trying to kill David and he has committed a lot of mistakes when he was king of Israel at last he died miserably in the battlefield on the other hand David was anointed by same prophet Samuel but he acknowledged that I am anointed by God and he identified himself as anointed person and thirdly he actualized that he actualized his anointing is an, in his life that he walked in that way see that's why when he is anointed he is able to understand the anointing of others that's why he said how how dare how dare you lay your hand on the anointed the Lord's anointed Saul is Lord's anointed David recognized Saul is anointed by God but Saul did not recognize David is anointed by God that's a problem here is the problem among us among the Christians among the pastors we have all these problems disunities all the all the quarrels everything is happening why because we don't we don't identify the anointing of other servants of God which means we did not identify our own anointing we did not identify for what God has set us apart for what God has consecrated us he didn't we didn't we don't do it that's the reason that we have quarrels that's the reason that we don't have unity among the pastors and leaders of the Christian ministry that's why we are not understanding each other and and also we do all the funny things all the foolish things that we do so even in college also we had to say brothers remember that your Bible college students every time when we when we give some of the uh, some of the advice some of the instructions brothers, don't do this one don't do this one because sisters don't do this one because you are Bible college students you are servants of God which means we are forced to sometimes remind you that you are anointed and anointed and anointed the moment you understand and acknowledge your anointing the moment you identify yourself with your anointing the moment you actualize the anointing in your life that is the time God is going to make great things among you if you see the Bible you see the Old Testament whenever a new era Whenever a new beginning is happening, that is the time God is making a covenant. New thing happened, Adam, Adam and Eve, God made an Adam, Adamic covenant. Then new thing from Noah, beginning, Noah covenant. New thing beginning from Abraham, Abrahamic covenant. New thing beginning with Moses, Mosaic covenant. But new thing, the kingly rule is starting from Saul. But God did not make covenant with Saul, rather God made covenant with David. That's why it is David covenant. God did not make covenant with Saul because Saul did not understand his own anointing so please my dear brothers and sisters this is the time that we may understand anointing acknowledge your anointing behave like that you're anointed one and acknowledge that anointing and understand it and understand the anointing of others let's all bow our heads and pray lord jesus thank you so much for the word that you have given to us lord help us to understand our own anointing just like david understood he understood his own anointing and also he understood the anointing of saul also Lord, help all of us, the entire NBC family, that we may understand the anointing that you have anointed us with. And we may follow that. We may live a life of anointing life. Thank you so much for this time. Bless us together. In Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you all.